Great tips. Great tips. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to press record. It's like, whoop. Hello everyone, my name is Monica. I'm the founder and CEO of the Universal Women's Network, Woman of Inspiration Awards, and this is the Woman of Inspiration podcast, where we interview women of inspiration making an impact locally, nationally, and globally. These are the women that are ignoring the naysayers, trailblazing, and inspiring others to take action on their dreams in their business and in life. So today I have a special, special treat. Uh, today I'll be speaking with Unstoppable Tracy Schmidt. And Tracy, you go by the name Unstoppable Tracy. We know that it's Tracy, Tracy Schmidt, but it's really everybody knows you by Unstoppable Tracy because you are truly one of the most inspirational women that I have ever crossed paths with. You, uh, you've always been the ray of sunshine every single time that I've met you. Um, for those of you that are tuning in on Facebook, on Instagram live and um, listening or viewing with us today, for those of you that are viewing, you can see her bright smile. You can see that she radiates joy and happiness. And for those of you that are listening, picture, close your eyes and picture um, a great big sun with a great big smile and somebody Aww. just oozing off so much positive, positive um, vibe. Monica. And that Aww. is this woman. Um, you walk into the room and you breathe joy. I'm going to get all teary eyed because you Aww. do that. And I don't think I've, I've seen you on so many different levels now since you've had the opportunity to yeah. um, meet that we met at Woman of Cross Inspiration. Paths. Talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but you do that. That's Trace. That is unstoppable Tracy. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Tracy. And, you know, we talked in the green room about how to actually um, introduce you because I, yeah. you know what, there are so many things you're so amazingly accomplished. Um, you were seen in the Oprah magazine. Yes. Raw beauty. Raw beauty. Um, I last actually saw you um, jumping off the pool ledge, this is more recently, that you don't even have in your bio that I wanted to make sure I, <laughs> I was watching TV the other day and I actually saw, oh my God, that's unstoppable Tracy. It was in one of the ads for participation. Yep. Everyone, everywhere. Hansen. Yes. And you jumped um, in off the pool into the ledge and you swam across the length of the pool and it was an ad for participation. I believe it was participation candidate. It was just an ad for everyone, everywhere, given oh. what's going on right now. Like everyone, everywhere. Let's all of us. This is impacting everyone, everywhere on Women's Channel Network. So you ski. You've done great, great things in your life. You've climbed the Himalayas. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that. Um, you've sailed. You are a master sailor. I want to talk about that. These are things that most World people Cup. have in their bucket list, but actually never do. You've actually done them and on to your next. Um, <laughs> and sailing World Cup, like not just sail, but sail not World Cup against me. Sailing men. World Cup. Yeah. Decorated athlete. Unstoppable, Tracy. You are also a best-selling author. You're a TV host. Mm -hmm. Do you sleep? <laughs> no, I'm afraid <laughs> that the, the wellness experts online are not going to love that. I, I have to confess, I don't sleep, not even during all of this going on. I don't know how people are talking about catching up on sleep and watching Netflix. That certainly hasn't happened for me. <laughs> and I'm going to say that you speak, like you speak to millions of people. You speak on yeah. stages for large companies. Yes. Um, you talk about leadership. You talk about limiting belief. You're an yeah. expert in the area, Tracy. And of disarming. Disarming. Yeah, those limiting beliefs. We don't want limiting beliefs. <laughs> no, you're disarming the limiting beliefs. And your, your, your videos have actually um, 60 million views. And counting. That and counting. was what it was like over a month ago. <laughs> okay, so tomorrow, 65. Yeah. So, Tracy, you've also been inducted, uh, I forgot, Canadian Hall of Fame. Now that was just recently, correct? Yes, that's for this year. That's true. Right. Okay. Wayne Gretzky and Brian Mulroney. It would just flabbergasted me. So for those of you that are actually on Instagram, for those of you that are listening or viewing on the Woman of Inspiration podcast, 
those are huge, huge, big, big things that most of us aspire to do sometime in our life. Tracy has done them already and she's always, she's on to her next. But the most amazing thing about Tracy is that she was born a four-way amputee. And Tracy, I saw a picture uh, recently on your Facebook and I just looked at that picture of this little babe <laughs> And this Aww. beautiful little dress. It looked like um, like a christening gown. My mom and had made it. Did your mom make it? She did. <laughs> She's an incredible sewer. It was so beautiful. And I thought, you know, how much confidence did you have even as a young soul? You just knew you were about to make such a big impact in the world. <laughs> Oh, you're right? so it just, lovely. That that was just that picture, and I and I think I have to dig it up and actually put it into um, some of the posts because it, it was so so beautiful. But I thought, wow, it's so powerful at the same time. Yeah. Four way amputee. So Tracy, um, you are 2019 woman of inspiration. You're what? a change maker. I can't think of a more deserving woman um, that has inspired, that continues to inspire, and that is actually changing the world, that you make people feel so good in your presence. And but we're unstoppable, Monica. It's, it's only honoring and realizing people like yourself with the Women of Inspiration and their mentor, her program, and... Oh my gosh, we are two peas in a pod, my magical, magnificent, marvelous Monica. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and, you know, I have to say that, you know, um, you've, you've achieved so much in your life. I want to start back to, you know, you, we all have choices in our life. Yeah. Right? I mean, you've achieved so much. I mean, I don't think there's one thing that you cannot achieve. <laughs> like honestly it, you are unstoppable and you know people talk about the the power of our mind and our abilities um and it's really true you have mastered that so i want to go back to that picture of that little babe and the little dress you know <laughs> with your arm in the air it's so funny with your arm in the air you know i walk into re the rooms now i'm gonna be very honest with you i walk into the rooms and you're like a celebrity <laughs> You're the most popular girl in the room. Yeah. Was it always like that for you? The, uh, almost, right? Almost. Yeah. Like you were saying, you know, you are unstoppable and you are amazing. And, there, and it's actually, it's not that I, Tracy, am unstoppable Tracy. We are unstoppable, right? I'm, I was lucky enough to be born missing my hands, missing my legs above knees. And so because it was such a visible physical disability, it was, it's immediate. It's the first thing people see. So right away, it's trying to have people view and not look at me with sad eyes or cry or think she can't do it and sit me there, right? I was just a kid and there's a cookie on the other side of the room. And like any old kid that wants a cookie, you were the one that was daft enough to think that, oh, she's got no arms, no legs, so she can't get this cookie, right? If you put it down low, other kids, you might put it up high, but you put it down low thinking I couldn't get it. But I'm like any other ordinary kid that wants to get that cookie and steal that cookie if I can reach it. And so <laughs> it was like, I had to figure out a way to crawl over and get that cookie. So I don't have arms or legs, but I can roll. I can roll over to that cookie. Who needs arms and legs, right? And so there's always a way. And I've got a torso. I sit up and I got a mouth. I can grab that cookie with my mouth. Who needs hands until I figure it out or the parts of the body that I do have are long enough to steal that cookie. Or I get that cookie I deserve because I work so hard to get there, right? Who says stealing is inappropriate? But and you said, you know, one of the most amazing things about you is that you're this four-way amputee. And, and, and I almost, I, I want to say thank you so much for that beautiful, thoughtful introduction and compliment. But I, I didn't choose to be born this way. That's not amazing about me. I was just born this way. They don't know why. I'm too young for there was a thalidomide drug that stopped people's arms and legs growing. And so some people think that's me, but I'm not. I'm just a fluke. 
And my mom is so funny. She says, you're a fluke in more ways than one, my dear. Right? Like she, like more ways than being born without. And my mom and dad and sister and aunts and uncles and great, 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 great grandparents, nobody else before me for many generations or after me, the children born after or cousins born after, nobody else are missing their arms and legs. I'm the only one that was born this way and they don't know why but I know that I was born exactly the way I was meant to be I don't want to be born any other way and and it's because of you say how come and who's that little girl and did she, was she unstoppable I know it's hard to believe because I am like a hundred percent over the top extroverted and outgoing out there you see me friendly but you say were you a celebrity every room you walked into like so I walk into a, a kindergarten classroom with no arms no legs everybody's looking. I walk into a shopping mall, a church, a movie theater. I walk into a billionaire's house like I did with you just a month or so ago. Mm-hmm. And, and eyes are on me. And, and it almost frustrates some people, right? Because they're like, oh, I'm the one that arranged this billionaire arrangement. And now everybody's looking and fussing over her. And I, and I didn't choose that. I'm just walking into a room, but because I've got this physical disability. So I learned pretty young that I'm the center of attention mm. and I don't want people crying. So how do you, how do you, as a young girl, instead of people looking at you and their eyes welling up in empathy of something and I'm not feeling sad, I got that cookie, for example, right? You got more than cookies, girl. You got I got a lot cookies. more than cookies all my life, right? Yeah. But what I needed to do was I need to immediately as a young child, and then I brought it into adulthood, flip people right? It's like, it's okay. Don't be sad. I'm happy. Look, look, look. I'm happy, happy, happy. Right. And, and so as a child, uh, I was lucky enough to be born this way to learn that when I look out in the world and I make eye contact with people and I need to make eye contact with people, because if I don't, they start crying. So I look out in the world and I put up my head strong and I put up my shoulders strong and I make eye contact and I look left to right constantly with a smile, with an intention to make Mm -hmm. sure that people are in that mindset. They're in that ready, willing. And so they go from, oh my gosh, she's got no arms, no legs to, oh, she's smiling. I'm going to smile back. And then it shifts. And so I did it inadvertently uh, because it, it, I don't want to play with a bunch of sad people patting my head. I want you to leave me alone and go talk to the other adults so that I can go play with the other kids on the slide. And I don't want you overprotecting me thinking I can't do that slide. And so it was so great to have to disrupt the norm. And, and so that's what I do in business too. And, and what I do every day is disrupt the norm. And if it's eating a bowl of soup or busting a business into Canada for Uber, I disrupt the norm. So let me ask you something. That cookie is a really great analogy. I love it. <laughs> ah. It's like you have to have a goal. Yeah. And you have to be razor focused at it and completely nothing unstoppable, just saying unstoppable at getting your goal. There's going to be barriers. There's going to be the damn chair in the way. Yeah. Right. Uh, Yeah. That's a big counter. How in the heck are you going to get to the counter? So let me ask you something. You got the cookie. You enjoyed the cookie. It was great. But you're like, did that. Now what, what's my next challenge? Yeah. So there's another cookie. So there's another cookie, but I want to ask something, um, you know, as, cause your parents and your family play such an important piece to it. So were they setting the cookie a little further away for you as you grew? How, how did you, I'm just sort of wanting to peel back and find out, you know, cause somebody would be just happy getting the same cookie all the time. Yeah. Right. They would be happy and, and okay. And, and that's okay. But yeah. you wanted the whole cookie jar yes <laughs> like I'm not satisfied with one I want yeah. all the flavors I want to sample them all and I want yes the cookie jar. it's so true you it's like you were in the kitchen with me and my sister and and the whole thing rolling out because that's exactly what happened and they're hiding they ended up with everything I'm down. Not yep. yet. there's something else um, I want to do. so where do you get that mindset Tracy were you born with it or did you have to with just talk to us about that mindset because I think that's really important for people right now because there's lots of cookies that we're enjoying, Yeah. but we have to think about coming out after this pandemic because right now is March 28th. We talked about the green room. 
on March 11th, 2020, we got news from the World Health Organization. They classified it, the coronavirus, as, the, as a global pandemic. Yeah. And in this short a period of time, things have changed in our lives, in our businesses, in the economy for every single person yeah. around the world. So let's talk a little bit about that yeah. mindset. Yes. Well, so it's, it's actually, it, there's sort of like a, a blessing in disguise. And we don't know what that is just yet. And, and you're sort of like, how come you want to keep going with that and, and that? that mentality. And, and I don't know what's going on in your world, all the listeners worlds. Like, I don't know whose health's being impacted. I don't know who's being isolated from beloved family members. I don't know, uh, like, you know, with speakers, I've had 24 of them. I've had $200,000 worth of income just completely cancel, right? Since March 11th and, and growing. Uh, and, and, and other people are losing their jobs and some people are living month to month and they're thriving to be, they were brave enough to go all in and quit their job and be an entrepreneur, but now what? And, yeah. and health and bigger things, like all sorts of things are going on. And I don't know what's going on in your lives right now in this horrific time in the world. I do know that I have every excuse as someone missing my arms and legs to not be in 20 countries in 2019 or in 20 cities since Christmas, right? I was on a plane when all of this went down. And so now I'm seven days in isolation because of being somebody that was on a plane when all of this went down and I had to get myself home. Uh, to so you've be done here. seven days already and you've got seven more to go? I have seven more days to go. I've been home alone in this house and I'm no arms, no legs. Right. So like the first day, somebody wanted to do a podcast and I have a, a tool that helps me do this fancy ponytail that some of you can see. A, there's a, a wonky bun on the top of my head, but my legs were off and I couldn't reach it. So I had to do my first Facebook live because like, oh, I haven't set up my house for being mm. isolated. Right. And stuff in in cupboards I haven't set up. And, and even, even today you joked about a chair in the way to get to the cookie. Well, you and I took a quick loo break and I had a chair in between me and the washroom that I'd moved to create a reaching something. And then I couldn't get to my very own washroom with my legs off. So I had to go back to the couch, get my legs on, go back and move the chair just to be able to go to the washroom and then come back and take my legs off to sit on the couch with all of you on this podcaster. So, you know, be you, many of you are isolated and being impacted, but, but you can just imagine, I don't live with anybody. There's me, myself and I. So anything that happens here, you know, I touched my shoulder on a picture frame and the picture frame went and there was glass everywhere. Well, the broom was behind this chair that I couldn't get to. So that's why I moved. The, the wheelchair was hiding in my cupboard, but the broom was hiding behind the wheelchair. So, and of course, with my knees, bumming around on my bum and my knees, I'm going to get all cut up with that glass. So how did I, all those years ago, you say, keep going forward, going forward. And one of the things I'm sharing with all of you, I don't know what's going on in your world, but I have every excuse to be a little bit bummed today because of breaking glass and not reaching food and not reaching tools for me to just do activities of daily living. And I'm all alone. And because I was on a plane there, it's really tough for people to be around me right now because of being on the plane seven days ago. And I have every excuse to be depressed about my business or about my hardships. But when I live a life of no excuses, I get to live a life of no limits no excuses, no limits. And I am blessed. I learned that every roadblock, something flips. So for example, in 2016, I was probably the most depressed I've ever been. It's like so lucky that that was my worst problem, but it hit me at that time. At 2016 in Rio, Tokyo announced that they were not having sailing in the Paralympics. Mm. And I had spent so I had been living out of my car for three months and I'd spent four years, you know, broken up relationships and not going back to the corporate world and, and doing 24, seven, five every day I was waxing boats and washing boats. And I didn't go to bed till midnight. Cause every night, as soon as the sun went down, I was working on my boat. And in between that time I was doing uh, labor for Magnus Lidgedal, a gold Olympian and turning his shake a leg parking lot 
nothing trailer into the U.S. Olympic Sailing Center Quality Club. And uh, Magnus and I affected every single sailor at Rio and at London that were Olympians or Paralympians, either Magnus or I, and I supported him in those efforts. And so it, it, by virtue of me supporting him, I touched every single boat and every single in the Olympics in London and in Rio. And, and, and it was in an attempt for me to get there. And what I didn't realize is, was that I was creating an unstoppable them uh, mm -hmm. at the time, unstoppable you. And I got blessed to see what a difference I could make for others. But you say, what was that that made me want to get the second cookie or get the whole cookie jar? Well, I was so lucky to be born with a four-way amputee because everybody underestimated me and everybody right now are underestimating themselves. They're like sleeping all day like this is awful. This is the end of the world for me. This might be the end of the world for people that are evangelistic and oh no, oh no. But I learned, I'm like, ah, oh, Tokyo canceled and this is awful. But then I got to regroup and discover what a difference I made in the world and ended up 60 million viral views with a kindergarten story, stopping people from suicide, encouraging people to jump in their business. I busted Uber into Canada when they were on their last legs of trying to get into Canada. And, and I learned the blessing in that. And, 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 and now Tokyo 2020 was canceled. So how lucky am I that the plug was pulled in, in August of 2016, mm. right? And, and so imagine if I'd spent four more years all in for Tokyo 2020, and then it just got totally cut. So yeah. I didn't know why that was, but I'm in a way, I'm lucky that Tokyo got pulled from me, that my dream got crushed in August because now all these athletes have their dreams crushed for Tokyo 2020. And, you know, I remember I spent three months washing and waxing boats for Magnus Lidgedal, a gold Olympian, trying to get him to take me on as an athlete. And Magnus is a gold Olympian. He only trains men. He only really trains people that have already demonstrated competency. And he pretty much, uh, Magnus is kind of like Shrek. He has this secret talent but he really likes to isolate because everybody around him just smothers him and he's this big famous whatever, you know? And, and so it's a big problem. And then here comes Donkey into his world, unstoppable Tracy that's like, Magnus, 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 Shrek, Shrek, Shrek. And I'm kind of like Donkey in Magnus's world, you know? And I'm, I'm there trying to get him to convert. And he's like, no, no, no. And I like spent three months being this annoying little Donkey to Magnus, washing his boats waxing his boats, introducing him to people that don't want to talk to him and, and being this thorn in his side and secretly sleeping in my car in the back of his parking lot, shake a leg, trying and waking up 530 every day. And he's like, are you here again? And I'm washing his boats and waxing his boats and whipping his lines and helping him. He didn't have a car. I would drive to pick up his sails and I do all these things. Every time I'd hear him need something, I would do it. And then after three months, he said, okay, come on, let's go sailing one day, one day. And so we go sailing that day. And then I spent three months more. And at the end of that, there was a regatta and I wanted to sail and I didn't have a boat. And he said, you can have that boat. And this boat was buried in the weeds. There was an animal living inside of this boat. It was, there was holes in the boat. And I spent another three months repairing it and cleaning it out and, and getting it ready to sail. And on the first day of this race, and it's Magnus's boat, it gets returned to him, but he's allowing me, if I fix it up, he'll charter it to me for free in exchange for fixing it up. So I fix it up and I take it to the race. And the first race, somebody runs into me before the race even begins and puts a hole in my boat. And he's so upset that he put a hole in my boat. He's like, let me help you. And then he rams into me trying to help me again. And my mast crashes down and crushes my boat, misses my head, slices me up with thousands of millions of paper cuts from the shroud, slicing me up and bleeding all over. So now I have like five holes in my boat, a crushed deck and the mast is hauled down. It's not my boat. I have to return the boat in better condition than I found it to Magnus, and I don't even get to race. I think it's the end of 
the world is horrible like it is right now. Mm -hmm. Everything is taken from you. Every finance, every food, every friend, you're isolated. Everything you've worked for that was climaxing around now is just pulled out from under you like this boat was for me. And I'm on the dock crying at the end of the day because I don't want anybody to see it. I was super positive. I'm like, oh, I'll figure this out. It's okay. No worries. Trying to make everybody else feel better because they're devastated for me. And, they, and they're and they happier. They're like, yeah, she shouldn't have been here anyway. No hands, no legs. What's she doing in this race? No wonder. And I didn't crash the boat. This other guy did. But they're all like, oh, well, that's because she's got no arms, no legs. Like, why do I want more of a cookie jar? Because everybody looks at me as a naysayer. And people look at you sometimes as some of the women listening in on this group as, well, you're a woman. Oh, you don't have a master's. Oh, what life experience do you have? What value do you have? You're short. You're a small voice. You have an accent. Who knows? You're too plump to be professional. Whatever crazy, wacky story, we all have noise naysay. Oh, you're a mom. You're too busy to be a professional, right? Like we all have these stories in our lives when they look at us as naysaying and people all my life look at me and say, well, you know, you're not really professional enough. No arms, no legs. I feel for you. You're inspirational, but you're not able to be in this race. The business race, the parenting race, the marriage race, the mother race, the, the, the breaking Uber into Canada race, the, you know, outperforming the stock market race. So all my life, I'm like, well, I'm going to show you. You think I can't break the stock market? I'll do it. But thank goodness. I'm glad people looked at me and said, you can't do this. Because mm. right now with COVID and losing $200,000 worth of income since March 11th, Somehow I'm not depressed. Everybody's calling me like, why aren't you bawling your eyes out? We all are. We're calling you to be lifted up. How come you're okay? I'm like, you know what? Because every time there's a breakdown, something better happens. Tokyo, I got kicked out of Tokyo. Something better happened. I got 60 million viral views. I dealt my, I, I 10 times my income since that news broke. I have affected thousands of people in a positive humanitarian way we all like to make a difference but if we're not paying our rent we can't help others if we're not giving ourselves oxygen we can't give other people oxygen well i found a way to give myself oxygen and 60 million other people oxygen you know and that if i hadn't have been kicked out of tokyo that wouldn't happen and and i was on that dock that day and this big lumberjack of a man comes down and he's not making eye contact with me and he looks at me and i think everybody's gone home i finally have the space to cry i'm hiding underneath the dock my my beat up boat is tied up at the end of the dock and i'm waiting to get it hoyered out of the boat but i don't want anybody to be around because i'm too sad to do it in front of people positively so i wait to hoyer out and everybody goes home the sun is setting everybody's gone and i'm crying on the dock getting my boat ready to hoist it out so i could start fixing it one day someday and this man this big massive giant his own shrek and he's like you okay <laughs> and and it's like this crazy voice. I think the poor man must have had surgery I think, I think on his throat. The voice again, Tracy. That was just like I, I think we're getting props on the voice. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my gosh, and I can't even do it justice. He was just like, "You okay?" Right. And I don't want to make eye contact with anybody because I know I'm gonna cry. So I just look, and there's these gigantic, hairy, blonde, hairy feet with ungroomed toenails in Birkenstocks and they're smelly and they're right beside me. So just so you get the full picture and I look at these hairy feet with overgrown toenails in these old, old, old Birkenstocks that are super smelly. And, and so I kind of look, but I don't want to make eye contact because then I have to do the convert them to positive, right? And I'm just in no space in this moment after six months and 12 years of getting to this very first race with Magnus's boat. And that man, that other man took it away from me running into me and everybody's looking at me like it was my fault and I had nothing to do with it. It's like you're stopped at a parking lot and some drunk rear ends you and people look at you like you're a bad driver. Well, you're stopped at a stoplight. Why, why are you the bad driver when the drunk hit you from behind? You know, that's what happened to me. Some drunk old man hit me. And so, but on the water instead of in a car, you know, and, and I said, yeah, I'm okay. And this guy goes, tough day, huh? And I'm like, yeah, it's as long as you're okay. I said, yeah, just sad about my boat but I'm not looking at him yeah. and he walks off. 
and he leaves me alone because clearly I want to be alone. And and I go in my finally go in my car and I'm sleeping in my car and everybody else they're in their big fancy hotels and they all and I hear the hubbub at like 7 a.m. of people running around the docks getting ready to go off and race because in racing and sailing there's a regatta it's like five to 12 races and it's the best score after a series of races so everybody's racing again and somebody's banging on my window come on Tracy get ready get ready get ready and I'm like don't they know my boat's totaled so I'm not racing and they're like you got your boat ready. You're a miracle worker. How did you get your boat ready after all that damage? You must have worked all night. Come on, come on, get going. Wake up, wake up. You must have pulled an all-nighter and slept in. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm like, my boat's not ready. So I open my car door and I go down to my dock and my boat is better than it was when I showed up at that San Diego regatta. It's like the lines are fed better. No, it wasn't San I think it was uh, Milwaukee. Pewaukee. It was Pewaukee. Uh, which is near Milwaukee. I didn't know there was a Pewaukee, but there is. There is very near Milwaukee, and uh, and I'm and my boat is better. The my 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 jib boo, my front little baby sail used to stick when it traveled because I fixed it, and I don't really know how to fix boats. I know how to sail boats, but I don't know how to fix boats. So it would stick in light winds. So I just had to pray for heavy wind because I knew it would stick in light wind. It was seamlessly fixed. Mm. The mast was up. The main sheets had a smooth feed. The boat was clean and beautiful and better than ever. It was amazing, amazing, amazing. That man that had talked to me on the dock at sunset, he was a Harkin brother. And Harkin makes boat parts, little oh. shackles and things, you know? And, and he was a Harkin brother. He was a German engineer a brilliant mind that made better boat parts like you made the podcast better by dialing it up by Instagram live today. You're always making it better. And the Harkin brothers, just like Monica with women of inspiration always makes things better. And he called five other engineers and they worked on my boat all night long. Five guru international engineers that who you surround yourself with, is who you become. You surround yourself with women of inspiration and you have become the number one woman of inspiration. You surround yourself. And so this engineer, just like you, surrounds himself with engineers. And so he has international engineers and they've made my boat better. And I thought that was the end of the world when that boat was totaled with, and, 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 and I got away with not breaking my neck when the mast fell down and I should have been happy, but I was devastated. I wish that mast had broke my neck. And I'm going to cry a little because that's really how I felt. I wanted to die that day. I couldn't believe that happened. And then what happens is a bigger, better boat. And, and I, want, I, wanted to, I didn't want to live again when Team Canada, when I didn't make it into Rio 2016 and when, when sailing Tokyo 2020 was canceled. But it was exactly what needed to happen. And I have a hundred more stories like that, Monica. I can give you a thousand examples that what's happening to us in COVID right now. I am so lucky that I was born without my hands and without my legs and that people look at me and say, you can't have that cookie jar. It's just that it's your disability. Like all that sympathy, all that naysayers to women or to accents or to weight or to height or to level of masters of education, or to being a mom, you know, or to not being a millionaire yet. So what advice do you have for millionaires? You know, all that underestimation. I am so lucky that I've been dealing with underestimation and naysayers and full on stop gaps like COVID every single day of my life. I dealt with it today, just running to the loo because I broke some glass and I moved a chair and now I can't get to my own washroom. And, and so, I deal with it every day. And, and so it doesn't stop me. I've learned to be like, okay, so what am I going to do? Not, oh my gosh, this is awful. You know, you know what's interesting? Cirque du Soleil, they're like on tight ropes and they're trying to learn on the tight rope. When they fall off the tight rope, Cirque du Soleil, they don't be like, oh my gosh, I fell off the tight rope. Oh my gosh, I'm never going to succeed. Oh my gosh, this is awful. When Cirque du Soleil is learning a new trick, they're like, oops, and they get back up. I got to try something else. That's how Cirque du Soleil practice. So we got to face COVID like, oops, I got to try something else. And, yeah. and, and, and we are, you and I just learned Instagram live in a bigger, better way. 
and we didn't stop. I've had six days of trying to be unstoppable with Facebook Live and Facebook pulled the button from being able to invite others. So then you do be live and then you do Zoom and you just, you're unstoppable about it. And that's who you are, Monica. You were unstoppable about making Facebook Live. So what? It took us two hours. Now we both are going to rock this world forevermore with this new skill under our belt. And it's, it's fabulous being with you. I surround myself. How can I get the cookie jar? By partnering with Monica, by being around women of inspiration like all our listeners. So many of them are close dear friends because together we are unstoppable. I don't do that alone. I do that thanks to Monica. Monica makes me amazing. Monica makes me unstoppable. Monica, women of inspiration, and all of you listeners support each other and we are unstoppable together. I'm not unstoppable, Tracy. We are unstoppable women of inspiration. Yeah. You know, Tracy, I, you know, I've, I, I'm seeing waves. I'm seeing, you know, thank you. I, I just, you know, I'm one great big goosebump listening oh. to stories. Um, I'm trying to get the mental picture of the Birkenstocks with the hairy toes oh. out of my mind right now. <laughs> yeah. But as, just saying. Um, but as you were talking about your, the stories, I think right now why I was so excited to speak with you is because exactly this, we're the blessed ones. I've always said that over and over again is the people that go through adversity yes. are the lucky ones. Yes. Because we know how to cope. We've yeah. had lots of practice. And yeah. <laughs> you know, like lots of practice. Yeah. So give me another one. It's almost yeah. like I don't know, a weird drug. I don't know what it is. It's yeah. just like, okay, let's have another challenge. Yeah. It's like I get that. And I just for those that are struggling with this right now, once it's it's you actually are only tested to your full potential when we are put out of your space that it's not your decision. Yeah. When you have no control of the outcome, when you're completely hands off, it's out of your control like it is right now. Yeah. That is when we are truly tested as humans. And that's when we truly have the ability to step into our greatness, our power, our voice yeah. and build our confidence. Yes. Now I'm just going to say, when you said that I wanted to, you know, like I was like, dead end 2016. Yeah. I want to talk about that depression piece too, mm. because that is serious. That's a real thing right now. And so here's, here's my take on that. And I'd love your take on that whenever, cause I'm used to going very, very hard, very, very strong. I, I tell the people that I haven't stopped since 2007. Yeah. And sometimes I get tired. I'm like going, Girl, you haven't even stopped. You do 14 hours a day every day. Yes. Sometimes 18, sometimes 22. Like yep. literally, I work so hard. Yep. And um, like two, 2007 was a long time ago. That's when my life changed overnight. Yep. And I became a single mom. Yeah. And, and that story, like I have a big story. Yeah. And, but I, I've always said my adversity is a gift. Yes. However, every single year I go through this, and probably because I go so strong out every single year, I, I actually have this space where I, I, I get kind of anxious. I get, um, I almost get sad, but I, you know, and I was like, Oh God, I just, you know, so, some days you just want to pull the covers over your head. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. what is wrong with me? I'm not like this. I'm no. like, I'm like literally I have so much drive. I wake up and I go all the time. What yep. is going on? And I don't, I don't, I didn't know how to relate to it. Yeah. So I would love your opinion on this because what I've learned to embrace Tracy is that when you go so hard, sometimes there's certain things again, that these things happen so that you slow down, that you rest. And I believe yeah. that pause is a time to rest. And if you're feeling like that, it's a time for you to rest because something is bigger and better at that you are going to need your energy for. So yeah. I've learned to embrace those moments as times to go, oh, thank you. Yeah. Otherwise I wouldn't stop. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't rest. Yep. So they're forced rest periods for me. And that's how I look at them is times when I just need to chill. Yes. And, and say like, hear what she described before that. 
because I don't know about you, but because a lot of people are about you got to stop and you got to rest and wellness. And I agree with all of that. And there's kind of this like, believe it and you can do it. And it's true. You must be able to believe you can do it to be able to do it. But what I learned in between is it's not just believing it. It's doing everything possible to make it happen. So first, you believe you're like, I have no idea how I'm going to be this number one woman of inspiration, guru, influential leader, Monica, yet an international. I don't know how yet, but I know it's going to happen. But she didn't just believe it and then sit back on a couch, right? She is unstoppable in making it happen. And so... Uh, you're right. Uh, as somebody that 18 hours, 10 hours, 22 hours, like someone like you, the only stops I get are the forced ones. Yeah, absolutely. Where I'm like pretty near the end of my rope. And that's not smart. Like stress management says, okay, this is your peak performance. So you got to take little breaks just before you get that breakdown place. And it sounds like you've learned that just before breakdown place where you want to pull the covers over your head and you're like, okay. And you learned like at first it was scary and you learned, oh my gosh. You know what? And you know, so for seven days, I've been like three, four hours sleep. And then what am I going to do? And I got to recreate myself and be ready for COVID and reinvent and reinvent and reinvent, like trying to get Magnus's attention or trying to write the book for the book lunch or trying to be number one international speaker. Like each time involved many, many, many long, long sleepless nights until I fall asleep. And then I get like a four or five hour on the couch or something because my body shuts down or that moment where I feel like you. And you know what? Today, I woke up and I'm like, I, I was the first day I didn't have a 12 o'clock Facebook live that I'd committed to, to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I thought I would get up and run around and I have all these different ideas of things I'm going to implement and, and start and draft for the Monday launch for when people are in business hours to create webinar leads, you know, all of that. But instead, I just wanted to pull the cover over my head. And instead, I had like a lump in my voice, in my throat thinking everybody else has got at least a child at home, or at least a husband at home, or at least a roommate at home, or at least a cat, or a dog, or a bird, right? And I got nobody, right? And I kind of had that feeling this morning. Uh, and I'm so lucky. Uh, okay, Google, what to, like I would like roll over and roll over and okay, Google, what time is it? 7am. Okay, you know, because I, I woke up at 5am. Okay, Google, what time is it? And I did that like over and over and over until it said, you know, 12 o'clock. Uh, Google just told me what time it was, by the way. It's so funny because I'm saying it to you out loud. And then I'm like, okay, I have to get my face on, get my hair on. I have to get my emotional energy in the space because I've committed to Monica at two o'clock as to record this podcast, you know? And, and so I have to, and I got to get some food in my stomach so I don't sound edgy because I haven't eaten, you know, that hangry. And I need a cup of tea just to reframe my headspace. So I got to boil a cup of tea. So thank goodness. I had Monica in my life that committed to me two o'clock today because it made me regroup. And I don't feel what I felt from 5 a.m. till noon today. I, and so I, it's funny that you describe that, pull your head over the cover. I totally went through that this morning. And it was because I had a commitment to you. So, you know, it really makes a difference, making a difference to others. Because Monica is so committed to being that resource for all of you as listeners, it comes back, you know, and she's not looking for that, but there is a ripple effect. You know, uh, on Tuesday at two o'clock, I have a, um, a LinkedIn live session, LinkedIn live at two o'clock on Tuesday with, uh, with a woman named Iris. She's an MA in relationships and she, she partners with um, the Dr. John Gray, the guy that did women are from Venus and men are from Mars. So she's a significant, like a lot of us have degrees, but she's like out there practicing with princesses and CEOs and real guru status. And she said that she's, her advice to get through Corona is forget yourself and make a difference for somebody else. Yeah. Her advice was, you know, reach out to that cousin in Germany, Tracy, because my last name's Schmidt, that you've not, you haven't talked to in a lot of years. Make a difference for other people because that will give you strength. And, and, and so you and I doing this podcast, you, Monica, being the person that's so committed to inspiring millions and millions and millions and billions of people, billions of people, because you make a difference, you got me 
through my funk today and it was Saturday and I didn't have anything. And so thank goodness you and I had this podcast today because what if that was the final straw that broke Tracy and then I can no longer make a difference for billions, right? And so it, that was her advice. So, so you're right. It's so true. There is that every now and then. And you're right. It is a blessing because I do need eight hours sleep. Right. For me not to catch the coronavirus, I've got no fever. I've got no cough. I'm fine. I've been seven days on an airplane, 99% likely not to get it. And if I was exposed to it, the way I'm not going to get it is if I sleep. But I'm not sleeping because I'm reinventing the wheel 24-7. And if I don't sleep, I'm more likely to be vulnerable. I'm eating healthy. I'm, I'm you know, every two hours I'm having cucumbers and celery and I'm eating my my meat and I'm having my isogenics with 23 nutrient shake every day to make sure I got all my nutrients and so I'm eating healthy and I'm keeping my brain busy but I'm not sleeping which is another variable to be healthy and I think we need to work like workaholics if you're reinventing yourself that doesn't just come by yeah. sitting on your couch you got to do what Monica does and what I do but you're right that forced regroup even though it feels a little sad at times is good for you and me but i don't recommend that for everybody i'm just recommending what she said to all the workaholics out there because and and being aware of the difference you do well, have to make it happen but you I'm do just, have to rest i think probably my biggest message with the be okay with it, embrace it yeah you know just cut yourself some slack, like just, you know, embrace the moment as a, as a period for growth. That yeah. that's it. I think yeah. it's just shift that to just, okay, I need to slow down because there's something bigger, better that I'm going to accomplish that it helps you get through there. And, you know, man, I, I love to work when you're yeah. doing something that you're really empowered and that really fills your bucket and that yeah. you're leading with a bigger purpose. Yes, yes, um, yes. Hours become, Seconds. Sorry, minutes become hours, hours yeah. become days, and days yeah. become weeks, and weeks become years. It just seems to happen. And, you know, I woke up this morning myself, Tracy. I had a commitment to you. Yeah. I had a scratch in my throat. I had, you know, I was sneezing. I was sneezing. And I was like going, okay, oh. one, I'm on the same routine of sleep that you are on right now because my yeah. brain is working so hard. Yep. Um, I'm not worried about the the virus right now. I'm no. actually working about strategy and yes. implementation. Yes. And my mind is actually super excited. Yes. It's it's not because I'm I'm worried. It's because no. I'm super excited about what I want to create. Yes. And all the opportunities that are sort of in my in my plate right now that I'm working through, which are super exciting. I'm not talking about them right now, but whoa, all I'm going to say is OMG, yeah. hard work is going to pay off because yeah. there's really great things happening. And then I was thinking about this network that we've built and the network is universal Yeah, and universal with network. everybody now needing to go online, I'm focusing on the network. Yep. I'm focusing on making that network really powerful, a tool and resource for people to use to amplify their business to connect, get support. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just really focusing on that. And, you know, so I'm really lit up and that's why I'm not sleeping. Yes. So yeah, me too. I think we could talk at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, I bake, uh, I don't know if you've been online and, but I, I think I've almost gone up at three o'clock in the morning and been inspired to make like banana bread with Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, I've been totally three, four, five, totally creating people. Some of you in the world listening right now might have seen emails and LinkedIn and messages and they're like, does this girl ever sleep? Well, not right now because I'm excited and energized by creating those leads. Yeah. So I think my whole purpose with really, really, and I mean, why I was so excited to be interviewing women of inspiration, why I created the Woman of Inspiration podcast, um, why I'm pushing forward with celebrating women of inspiration who lead, inspire, motivate for 2020. And so my vision right now is I see what's going on. I'm very, very, I watch it. I, I see what's going on, Yeah. but I am on the other side. I'm already planning the other side for you. Yeah. Visionary. 
Yeah. So some people at my job and my role, I take it. Okay. I, if we're all in the trenches, there's nobody going to look after us on the other side. Yep. So we've got, I feel like we've got some really good people, lots of people in the trenches right now, looking after each other. Yeah. So I have to be able to be strategic about looking after the people and looking after that end game at the end, which is where I am. So yep. that's why I'm working behind the scenes 24 seven, building relationships with sponsors because there are people that have funds right now. Yeah. Okay. Not everybody is a, in a state of crisis no. and the people that are okay and they're cash flash and they're going to survive and they're going to thrive through this. They're also going to be one going to be the people that are going to help me build women of inspiration yep. so that we can acknowledge the leaders that are going and getting us across the finish line. So yes. I see this year is probably one of the most significant awards celebrations that we've ever created yeah. where we get to admire, uh, admire, honor, respect, celebrate, bring all of our women of inspiration alumni. You know, we have a two day success summit now, Tracy. Yeah. That was one of the news. I haven't really announced it yet. Just saying. Just hint so everything like, like yours, like mine. I canceled everything. I have nothing. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Like I lost everything opportunity. So now I'm going to, um, but you uh, also created, uh, probably right. so that and 10 day. times more. Yeah. So I created a two day and then I created uh, the woman of inspiration. So now that gets to be the big big celebration after we get out of this. Yeah. So while I'm working head down on, you know, maintaining my visibility in the community, uh, I, I'm working on the podcast because guess what? We're going to share this. We're going to inspire people Yes. to share messages from people that are so embracing the adversity and using it as gifts. Yes. We need that right now. We need hope. We need inspiration. We need yeah. leaders to come to the table. We need them to lead by example. Yeah. And we've got to keep pushing forward. And yes. we've got to put those things in front of every single person, not just once, not just twice, as many times as you need that dose of inspiration. Yeah. Because the current situation is not going to be our yeah. next normal situation. Yeah. And I truly believe innovation is destructive. Yeah. Um, Oh, we all know that when like the boat, the boat, yeah, yeah, the boat, the boat is broken right now. Yeah, and it's got holes in it, and it looks like it's sinking. Yep. But the very next day, that boat is stronger, and it's painted, and it's got new, faster equipment. It's given us all the opportunity. Look at the tools that we have. Yep. And see how we can do them better. Yep. And things that aren't working, we probably didn't need. So yes. be gone with that. Life's yes. Sure. So yes. man, I, I'm just so empowered by you, Tracy. Now I want to, um, you know, we, we probably have to watch our time here. Be I could talk to you all day. Likewise. <laughs> and sounds so like hard. all night. <laughs> all night. Let's, <laughs> let's do this later. I, I think we actually ran out of time on the Instagram live. Okay. We hit our, I don't even know what time that was. I didn't press time here. So, because it's usually on my phone. Um, so Instagram hit its max. Okay. And, and clocked out. So whatever time that is, we know that it doesn't go on forever. Instagram. So good lesson. Yeah. Um, so I have to ask you 2020, you've got lots on the go, Tracy. Yeah. I have a feeling, you know, the message of hope, inspiration, resilience, adversity, you know, all those things that seem so tragic are not, they're actually no. beautiful, beautiful gifts. And so from your perspective, you know, if, if you can inspire, um, a billion people, like, a, like, let's go big. Yeah. How big can we make it? Right. I Trillion. see inspiration globally, universally. Like I see it in every single part of the country of like internationally, those planes will be flying. Yep. We're going to have to do some health and safety things differently to protect ourselves. We're going to really stay home when we're sick. We've learned some really great lessons here, but mm -hmm. things are going to continue. It might yep. take a while, but they will continue. Yep. And when they do, sharing the stage with women like you is, is what I envision globally. Brilliant. How magnificent. I think it's an incredible vision, my friend. 
And I, I believe that the magic is going to be, like you said, in pulling the people up around you, right? Your support system is really critical. Yes. Uh, you know, and everybody's looking for that positive, you know, like every woman has a story, Tracy. Yes. Every woman has a story. And, you know, the strength in the story is not ignoring the pain. Uh, the str and the strength in who you surround yourself with is who you become, right? Surround yourself with Monica's vision, with her summit, with Unstoppable Tracy. So for an unstoppable you, surround yourself with us, the women of inspiration, that universal network that Monica is creating bigger and better every single day, every single second she creates. Universal network exists. So jump on now and it's going to get bigger and better. But the strength in that is not ignoring the fat the fear, the anxiety, the tension. I say fat because us women are overly preoccupied with fat. So the fear, the anxiety, the tension is not to ignore the FAT, the fear, anxiety, tension, but strength through story where you, you vent out and you share that vulnerability of the fat and then you share the incredible common success factors and the behavioral competencies that came out of overcoming that obstacle. You know, Monica shared this, the, the luckiness of having adversity over and over and over again, whether it's a divorce, whether it's a loss of a loved one in whatever circumstance it might be, like a separation or a death or a health or a distance or a moving or, or, or coronavirus, whatever it might be, uh, or being born this way and people telling you, no, you can't work here. No, you can't swim. No, you can't have a boyfriend. No, you can never have children. You know, like all these whatevers that they might say, right? The strength in that is that we got to learn fear, anxiety, and tension hits us. And sometimes we want to pull the cover over our heads or worse, but that we learned, okay, let's buck up and suck it up buttercup and be no excuses. And, and because we live a life with no excuses after overcoming that adversity, we are limitless, you know? And, and that adversity taught us that we are limitless. Well, here's a really big secret. Some of you are already limitless too. And for those of you that don't know it yet, you are limitless too. We are all unstoppable. We are all limitless. And you, and you become limitless by facing that fear, that anxiety, that tension, Yep. And then pivot with the likes of Monica with her universal network. And it isn't inspiration one time. Monica said it's over and over and over. You know, over I don't like inspiration. I don't want to jump in the shower and that inspiration all washes away and it's gone after that one podcast. I like inspiration to action. I like inspiration into what is it next. It's not one cookie, as Monica said. It's the whole cookie jar. And, and what makes you keep going with that? Well, it's that adrenaline rush of once you get that exhilaration of, I got through it. You're like, I'm ready to get through the next thing. Wow, this feels great. I got through it. We were lucky to know that. So you will get through this. And not only will you get through this, but as a result, just like with war and times of depression and other health scares, is the generation are these great unstoppable souls. And, and we were all talking about, boy, who's this generation of kids? You know, we spoil them and we give them everything they want. And, and they describe, you know, where's their motivation? And, and they want everything handed to them or, or certain people that are maybe affluent and they haven't had to struggle because they've been able to just buy 25 hoodies instead of save up for one hoodie, you know, whatever it might be. Well, we've just created a generation of a new unstoppable world, folks, because nobody's going to feel entitled anymore after this, because we are all going to be trying. And so where are we going to find our resources with Universal Network? Who is our lifeline? You know, I repel and hang off cliffs and climb mountains. And I look like I'm doing it all by myself in those pictures, no hands, no legs, hanging off a cliff but there's someone on my lifeline. There's someone on my belay line and that's universal network. She's got my lifeline so that I can get out there and launch and facilitate and be independent, making a difference to those billions of people. But it's because I partner with Monica and, 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 and so find your lifeline and don't let that inspiration wash away in the shower. It is something that needs to be rejuvenated and revisited because every time you shower, it's gone. You're going to need to re-hit and re-deodorize 
think of universal network like your deodorant. It's something you've got to do every day. The universal oh. woman's network. Thank you. Thank you, my yeah. friend. I got, we can't forget about the women part. Number one, universal the women's women network. So important, right? Yes. We need to really, oh We're my the gosh. vendors of the world. They, they are key to the development of the world. Absolutely. And I think that that's really important that it doesn't get lost right now in what's yeah. going on because we're pushing so hard that we can't stop pushing yeah. um, for the advancement of women. And also uh, the men that support and champion for women is really strong. So it's like, I've, I've seen so many beautiful acts of generosity and kindness and leadership that have happened out of at everything that we've um, been experiencing over the past, what, 11, what, two, two and a half weeks, right? Yeah. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, heartbreaking. Uh, it, it's really, it's scary. It's ugly. It's heartbreaking. It's yeah. unfathomable. Um, but we are going to get through it. We yes. are going to get through it. It's true. And you need to highlight the fact about it's women that get you through. And I have this wonderful friend, a phenomenal lady named Sarai. And, you know, there's, there's things in her family and she is actually the, the strength in her family. She's getting the groceries. She's taking care of her mother and her brother and her baby and her neighbor and her friends with depression and her community that she supports with uh, physical disabilities. And she is the super strong strength, this woman, right? And she also happens to be missing one leg as a mom, single mom uh, out there. And she was grocery shopping yesterday and and she was out in the mall and she went with her brother and, and she, her brother is a big gigantic guy. She's like five foot five, five foot four. And he is like seven feet tall and big and solid, but he is so anxious and nervous around people. He won't make eye contact with people. So he looks like he's big and scary, but it's because he's scared of the outside world. And so she brought him with her to carry things, right? She has a two-year-old baby and she has all these groceries and one leg and, and, uh, and a fractured heel. Her one real foot has a bit of a fracture on top of everything else, but she's the one getting groceries. She's the one taking care of everybody. She's the one listening to everybody. She's the one being funny and inspiring folks and keeping everybody strong. So you talk about the women are the strong ones that pull everybody through in this time of crisis. And two people came to grab her grocery cart, which she needed for diapers at the time. And these one went on one side of the grocery cart and one went on the other side of the grocery cart. And they were so daft that when they went to steal the grocery cart from who they thought was a not strong, tiny, one-legged woman with a baby, they both pulled in two directions and they didn't get the grocery cart because they didn't wisely steal it from the right direction. And in that moment, the brother comes around the aisle and starts walking, eye contact down with his hood on scared and trying to be invisible to the world, but seven feet tall and big and strong, walking towards his sister from around the aisle where he went to fetch something. And the two of these small teenagers looked at him and bolted. And so, it, but it's Sarai that's his strength. And so imagine if they had broke Sarai that day, emotionally, physically, and it wouldn't have been Sarai they broke. It would have been the baby. It would have been the brother. It would have been the mother. It would have been the neighbors. It would have been the hundred people with intellectual disabilities that she supports. Mm. It would have been uh, the friends with anxiety. Like it would have been so much more than breaking Sarai. And so, you know, it's funny that you talk about the women are the, and I, uh, some of your viewers know, listeners know, I've worked in Uganda and Mexico and Nepal and Jamaica and 20 developing countries. And every time it is the women that are the super strength of solutions, getting water to the most people in the village, but they're the ones that are given food and water last because they think it's the men that create the strength but it's the women that are getting the water and inventing the water solutions and feeding the village. But they're the ones that are fed last, you know, and, and it's the men where they send one per person from the whole village to go mm. get some schooling. They never send a woman, even though probably nine times out of 10, it's one of the girls in the village that's the smartest and would make the most of that education when you send that person uh, for, to represent the village. So it is the women that are the strongest. We see it in extreme situations. And I've certainly seen it firsthand because of all my developmental work. That's why I got the uh, inducted into Canada Hall of Fame. It wasn't because of 
being a four-way disability, uh, four-limb impacted disability. It wasn't because of breaking Uber into Canada. It wasn't because I ended pilot strikes. It wasn't because I'm a teacher it, it, or an educator or a leading award winner. It's because of my humanitarian work in developing countries in over 20 developing countries uh, mm -hmm. that they inducted me into the Canada Hall of Fame. Uh, and making an impact for people and people with disabilities in particular, uh, but for all people around the world. And uh, it, I, can, I can promise you, Monica is spot on. I know at all levels of economy, I've seen rich economy and I've seen the brokest of economies. And it's always the women, always the women. women. Behind every billionaire, there is a strong woman. And, and behind every success and breakthrough, is a woman and you know i don't see that stopping now that's why it's so important that you know your value and that is another podcast is knowing your value um i i i really truly believe we have to stop giving it away like really it's just um you know uh, heartbreaking when we see all of these um events happening and they're all online and they're for free and you know they take just as much time to put them together as they do to put them live yeah it's like you're not paying for a venue yeah. so all those times all the research all the resources all the talent still needs to happen yes and so you know, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how we, we do that and, you know, still trying to think about building the business out of that. Um, and, and right now there's lots and lots and lots of white noise, Tracy. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to do X number of women of inspiration podcasts with really dynamic leaders yeah. that are changing lives. Right. Yes. Not just anything. And you say, not how do we? I'm not, I'm picking and choosing what I'm doing and I'm not, I want value and I want quality. Yes. And I want to encourage people to not scramble into thinking that they have to start putting out stuff. If you didn't do it before and if it's not your line of business, keep in your lane. I, I want to tell people to keep in their lane. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so important because uh, a lot of people have invested a lot of time and I, I see so much noise out there right now. Yeah. And I think it's really important for people to keep in their lane, um, keep what your area of expertise is and know your value. Yeah. And that you have value. Yeah. You know, and so what do really super successful people do? They surround themselves with people that are more successful. Absolutely. Right? The, the millionaires surround themselves with billionaires. And so Monica is super successful at this with the Universal Women's Network. So if you want to grow or you want to create a new lane, so set yourself up for success by surrounding yourself with the Universal Women's Network, for example. Surround yourself with unstoppable Tracy because we're already a billion views on online or you know 40 countries in my lifetime 20 countries in 2019 20 cities since 2020 since Jan since Christmas right like who's already doing what you want to do and surround yourself with them and follow them and learn from them yeah. in those tips uh, to surround yourself with to get to that lane but don't jump in the lane or you're gonna be doing 20 miles an hour and speed limit is a hundred and you're going to get run over. And, and so instead of jumping too quickly and, and learn like, and here's the other thing too, Tracy, is that, you know, we have, I look at the, the, there's some such beautiful gifts now. I mean, we have a speaker bureau yeah. um, with the universal women's network. And so there are certain people that should be driving in a different lane too. Let's also look at that where they're yeah. not driving in the right lane yet. Yeah. So, um, are you a G2? Are you a G1? What right. lane are you ready for? Not the so highway yet. There, there are so many different things. So I think right now it's really important to sort of do some research, figure out where it is that you want to do. If you want to do a shift, do your research and, and, and do your research well, but also pick the right lane for you. Um, if it's a time to switch, then just make sure that you do your research really well. Um, and I'm looking at sort of our, um, the ability with online events and stuff like that. Um, 
not everybody is a speaker. Everybody and wants to be. <laughs> everybody wants to be a speaker, but not yeah. everybody is a speaker. No. And so we're building out the Women of Inspiration, um, the Universal Women's Network, the Speaker Bureau. So that is an opportunity for people that are speakers that speak as industry experts, as visionaries, as motivational speakers, as inspirational speakers. They have the ability to be on that same lane and driving field so that people can actually find out who they are. Yeah. And, and right. So, and then it's also almost like a, a stamp of, yes, if I go towards universal women's network and I see Tracy unstoppable Tracy, I mean, they've probably seen you somewhere before. And if they haven't uh -huh. heard about you, <laughs> and I think that that support and that network also gives you that credibility that we're not just going to put anybody up there. No. And that, is a direct impact up to our brand. So we wanna make sure that the people that are out there, I mean, the customers that are coming are corporate companies, they're looking for session workshop speakers, they're looking for industry experts, um, panels. I mean, we use them for our own um, panels, um, you know, for our own Women of Inspiration or Success Summits. So I just think there's so many great opportunities right now. I just wanna say, know your value, pick a lane, and then just start focusing on that. Um, yes. And I, and what people don't know is you and I have invested thousands of dollars in coaches that are millionaires above us, you know, and, Billionaire. and billionaires above us, right? We've both invested with both of those. So we didn't just jump into the fast lane. We both advocate jump, believe in yourself, find your resources. But what you, what you get, what you put in is what you get out as well. And, and so there is, it's not, it's researching and learning and we could have learned what we learned from, and a lot of initially what both of us did early on, like I talked about the sailing story starting at 2016, but like you, it started 2007 after a certain job, uh, leaving in a certain job. And before that, like with skiing or before that with sailing, you know, it's, it's been a lifelong journey. And instead of spending 30 years that it took me doing it myself, which was great and fabulous and unstoppable of me, by investing in somebody that was already succeeding at it in 2017, in, in, in three months, instead of 30 years, yeah. I created exponential results. So, so, you know, if you're trying to speed up, if you're jumping in lanes because you wanna speed up your success rate, there's, there's ways to do that. But it, it, it isn't getting yourself run over, right? And so for me, that involved investing in millionaires. And, now, and once I got to that space, now Monica and I in 2020 are investing in billionaires to drive us and thrive us. So when we share with all of you, it's, it's from a lot of influential people that are succeeding even bigger than us. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that the word here is know your value, but also be willing to invest. In your value. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, some you have to be willing to invest in yourself, believe in yourself, and then yeah. take action on it. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to be consistent. Yep. You have to have a plan. You can't just wing it no. because there are no accidents. And you have to be completely, a, and this is why the adversity bubble that's happening right now is such a blessing. And that's, I think I just want to talk about that again. Yeah. If you think about how you're coping through this storm, yeah, that is going to be your greatest asset is yeah. how you actually are navigating through this. And one of my favorite quotes is resilience is not what happened to you. It's what you choose to do. What happened to you? Yes. Brilliant. Right. Beautiful. Yes. And that's it. That yep. is the secret sauce. Yep. There's a whole lot more to it, but if you have that in your mindset, every single time you make a decision of right, left path lane, you know, attitude, the way that you treat people around you, the decisions that you make, yeah. are you forming relationships by making fast decisions? Are Not you always. cutting off people that you should be supporting? because they've supported you because they will remember. This is also a time that people will remember when you Who have reached not out. Yeah. So there's so many lessons to be learned right now. And that's, that's another, another show, but 
women um, that succeed and inspire others walk the talk. They lead by example. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how sticky, ugly, horrible, gross, painful it is. You come out on top because you, yeah. you, you have core values and you know who you are and you know your strength. So yes. I think that that is so important. Tracy, you are probably, um, I see so many beautiful things coming out of, out of this for you because everybody needs to have a Tracy on the right shoulder and a Monica on their left. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that. I right? love that. I think they need that sort of little bit of a pep talk every day. And yes. You know, it's just like, uh, everybody has the power inside of them. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Maybe I'm trying to think of who we are because I don't want to be the devil on the one shoulder and you're the angel on the other. What I'd like to, I mean, I'm like, okay, so with two shoulders, that's what came in my head. And I'm like, I don't mind being a little bit of a, de a devil to nudge you into action, no excuses. And yet you're the angel that's like, so I, what I thought of was Wizard of Oz. So you're Belinda, the, the good witch, and I'm Dorothy. <laughs> right? Who's got the red shoes to click. And I've discovered and that the power is it within me and the power is in within you. And so this is why you need us both on your shoulders. I'm the Wizard of Oz movie, Dorothy, that's going to kick you into action. And uh, we've got our magical Monica as Belinda the Good Witch that's, that's got us known about us being capable all along. Amazing. You just have to have a team. So Tracy, what a fantastic interview. I know that I, I let these interviews go where they need to go. Uh, I like to start with something, but I like the messaging that we, I think we nailed the messaging on this one. It was yeah. beautiful. Um, so thank you everyone um, for joining us on the Woman of Inspiration um, podcast today. My name is Monica Kretschmer and I was with Unstoppable Tracy. I, you can find out more about Unstoppable Tracy by following her by simply Unstoppable Tracy. And that's Unstoppable T R A C Y. Yes. She's on YouTube, as she is on Facebook. I don't know that you're taking any more Facebook requests anymore because oh, you. But I have a it. fan page. Follow my fan page. Follow her fan page. Check her out on her um, website. This is not going to be the last time that you're going to see Tracy. She is a 2019 woman of inspiration change maker. There is only one Tracy. And she oh, I was so awesome. proud to close out your ceremony in Toronto. Thank you. Thank you. You oh. are so welcome. And I, we actually look to have you uh, back for our success summit. Um, and so watch for those announcements where you can have an opportunity to, you know, see Tracy live, meet her. Um, Tracy, if you want to share, you've got your book handy there. Um, let everybody know she's holding up her book, Unstoppable You. And this is a picture of you in the Himalayas. Yeah, well, it was superimposed on top. A prettier picture of me superimposed on top of the Himalayas. So I was actually. like, when well, did you wear that dress hiking? No, I did place? not. <laughs> I, I, I could find a picture. Just saying. But you're like, wait a minute. You know, and, and so you talk about resources and where to go. I have this, what I'd like to do, my gift to the world right now during this really tough time is that people can get a free download. And okay. so I share the stories in here, but you can see I'm showing you blank lines. There, There's... There's this, there's the all the different chapters of that sailing story and the skiing story and the Himalayas story, but at the end of every chapter is exercises so that you that are coaching others, you can borrow those questions, you can steal those questions and repurpose them with your clients. Or you can repurpose them and self-reflect so that that inspiration doesn't wash away in the shower. You're creating those plans that Monica's talking about and you're keeping yourself inspired so you can self-reflect you can use repurpose these and use them in your business if you like so a tool a resource to give you that higher quality coaching questions for self and for others and and uh, hear those stories so unstoppabletracy.com and if you share your email i'll send you that free resource along with the video that got 60 million viral views short little video amazing tracy a true blessing i'm so happy that we had a chance to connect today it's like really, it fills my bucket. Yes. Um, it makes me uh, 
you know, so excited about the future and, you know, how we can help and serve people. Um, you know, that bigger piece of humanity is while we do everything that we do. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, we will have this out in the podcast. Of course, this video is live and we maxed out our Instagram account, <laughs> with the live Instagram. That was our first time with that one. So um, looking forward to um, seeing you all nominate your woman of inspiration. Yeah. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at Woman of Inspiration in Calgary and in Toronto this year. Um, and watch for it news on Universal Woman Woman's Network.com. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day, and together we are stronger. Bye. And I'm gonna do a fist bump. Can we do like one of these? Yeah, like uh, okay, good. That was that was what we were supposed to do. Ready? Hold on, there we go. Bonk. Okay, bonk, bonk. that's the new elbow bump is what we're supposed to be doing now. Yes, so, and I like to do it foot inside foot and bump to bump and, you know, right right before they fully quarantined us. That's what I was doing with one poor principal. I over if we did like the ankle thing. Yeah, right? <laughs> Don't you two-legged people coordinated. have so much trouble with balance. <laughs> not that coordinated. So thank you everyone again and we'll see you on the Woman of Inspiration podcast.